Right, we're on chapter 10 now. A ghastly -est. I think, began Myrtle, her tongue tracing the plate for any uneaten crumbs, having a thing as a pet would be a big fat disaster. Mr and Mrs Meek let out a humongous sigh of relief. <sighs> Their lives had been spared. We couldn't agree more, exclaimed Mother. Father beamed. You took the words right out of our mouths. The creature would destroy everything, Myrtle continued. You are so right. Righter than right, called Mrs Meek. What a clever girl you are, agreed Mr Meek. The car, the house... Everything. It might even kill us all. Excellent point, agreed Father. Yes, best not to die if you can possibly avoid it, echoed Mother. Who on earth would want a thing as a pet? Ha ha ha, chortled Myrtle. Her parents joined in. Ho ho ho, hee hee. Even the Monsterpedia seemed to wobble around, chuckling silently to itself. Me, replied Myrtle. The laughter died instantly. Mr and Mrs Meek couldn't believe their ears. The book stopped dead still. I want a thing as a pet. B, b, but, began Mother. No buts, shouted the girl and she bashed her parents' heads together for emphasis. Ow! Ouch! I said I want a thing, and I want it now. Mr and Mrs Meek looked at each other. Both were so aghast, it was impossible to tell who was the most aghast, or, to give it its improper word, a ghastliest. You can decide for yourself by studying these two aghastliesque pictures. Who do you think was the most aghast? Mrs Meek or Mr Meek? For goodness sake, don't take too long deciding. We have a story to be getting on with. Please, let's agree that they are both extremely aghast, as indeed you'd be if you'd had to bring a deadly animal into your home. Now, all they had to do was find one. Can you remember from earlier in the book where we said the thing would live? In the Monsterpedia it said they live in the jungliest jungle, don't they? Chapter 11, Twin Beds The big question was this. Who would have to go to the deepest, darkest, jungliest jungle in search of this blasted thing. Sitting up in their twin beds, Mr and Mrs Meek discussed this, way into the night. Of course, both were desperate not to go, but being who they were, the argument was remarkably polite. But indeed, you need a jolly good holiday, Father began Mother with a smile. You have been working so hard at the library. You should go. Oh, no, no, no. You have always said you wanted to travel and explore the world, Mother, replied Father. Have I? You said you wanted to go to the seaside. For the day? Well, this will be very much like a day out at the seaside. In what way, pressed Mrs Meek. Well, that stumped Mr Meek, rather. There might be an ice cream van, he offered pitifully. An ice cream van? Mrs Meek was incredulous. In the deepest, darkest, jungliest jungle? There was a loud banging on the wall. Boom, boom, boom. Keep it down in there, shouted Myrtle from her bedroom next door. I can barely hear myself grunt.
Needless to say, Mr and Mrs Meek both looked appalled. Mother suddenly had an idea. Of course, one of us is going to have to stay behind and look after our darling daughter. Our darling daughter all on their own. I'll go, he replied, quick as a flash. I don't think he wants to be left alone with Myrtle, does he? To the deepest, darkest, jungliest jungle? Yes, so that's settled then. Good night. With that, he switched off the light. Mr Meek slept like a baby that night. He woke up every two hours, crying his eyes out. Chapter 12. Some Light Reading At dawn the next morning, Mr Meek set off on his quest to find a thing. He had cast aside his bookish persona and had now turned himself into an adventurer. Well, sort of. The man had put bicycle clips over the bottom of his trousers in case he snagged them on some undergrowth. Poor Mrs Meek was very tearful at the doorstep. Since the day they were married, the pair of Liberian lovebirds had never spent a single night apart. Please, please be careful, implored Mrs Meek. If you implore somebody, it means like you're, you're begging them. Mr Meek was trying to be brave, though it was not his strong suit. Don't you worry, Mother. I will be back with a thing before you know it. What's the absolute worst that could happen? You could get eaten, called Myrtle from an upstairs window. Thank you for your contribution, my angel sent from heaven, called Father. He smiled weakly at his wife. I will do my absolute best not to. Promise, she implored. I promise. They kissed awkwardly. Their kisses were always awkward. Either their noses knocked, or chins bumped, or glasses crunched. Today, their foreheads clunked together. Ouch! Ah! Sorry, sorry. There's a picture here of Mr Meek ready to go on his adventures. Okay, so this is normal Mr Meek. And this is adventurer Mr Meek. Can you spot the difference? Mr Meek picked up his suitcase, took a deep breath and walked down the path. I miss you already, called out Mrs Meek. Yuckety yuck yuck yuck, came the cry from upstairs. Mr Meek blew a kiss back to his wife, which fumbling she caught. Move your bottom, shouted Myrtle. Father picked up the pace and with his suitcase in hand, began walking to the bus stop in his socks and sandals, shirt, tie, slacks and tweed blazer. He looked nothing like a jungle explorer. Having never left his town before, he was woefully unprepared. The only food he'd brought was a packed lunch that Mother had made him. It consisted of a bread sandwich, a pocket of flavourless Oh, sorry, a packet of flavourless crisps, a plain yoghurt. As is often the way with packed lunches, Father had scoffed a lot within five minutes of setting off from home, sitting on the bus on the way to the airport. Soon after, he became cataclysmically hungry and resorted to eating the plastic box in which his lunch had been packed. Ugh. He ended up rather liking the taste as there was none. I think Mr Meek must like quite plain food. In his suitcase, Mr Meek had packed an anorak in case of rain and spare pairs of underpants and socks. He'd also brought some light reading, a small selection of his favourite books from home. A history of cauliflower boring buildings of... Oh, a history of cauliflower. Boring buildings of Britain... A closer look at gravel, tissues around the world, a spotter's guide to sandals, a million times tables, light bulbs, light bulbs, 
and more light bulbs. Plus, he had taken out of the library the book that had led them on this quest, the Monsterpedia. It was wriggling around in his suitcase. He just had to remember to return it within two weeks or there would be a hefty fine to pay. Of course, Mr Meek had made some room for the most important items of all. The special thing capturing equipment. First, a rusty old hamster's cage that he'd found up in the loft. Second, a giant tin of the thing's favourite food, custard cream biscuits. These were to lay a trail to tempt the thing into the hamster's cage as soon as he had spotted one. Mr Meek's plan really was that simple. How could it possibly go wrong? Maybe while she waited for the next chapters to be read, you could make a list of your own monster. You could make your own monster up for the Monsterpedia and decide what your monster's favourite food would be and how you would capture it and what it would look like. You could even draw a picture and do a description. Okay, and you could send that to your teachers. All right, see you all later. Bye.